If you like this video, why not subscribe? Hey everybody, today I'd like to share a really good deal that I found on Amazon recently. As some of you may or may not know, I've been looking at getting a new external monitor because my older one was a standard definition monitor. And when I upgraded my camera to a Sony NEX5N, that camera, this camera here, does not have any composite output. So I needed a monitor that had an HDMI input. And even an entry level HDMI external monitor is going to run you at least 100 bucks. And that's not something I was super excited to spend. So as I was periodically looking on Amazon, I stumbled across this generic model, which is made for the inside of a car, and it only costs $56. And I went ahead and announced it on the Facebook group, which is a good excuse to be a member of that group, to find these deals as they come out. Uh, and I, I bought one, I got it, I've been looking at it for a couple of weeks now, and I'm actually really impressed with what it has to offer. Now the bad news was, was that these sold out rather quickly after I announced them because they were so inexpensive, so cheap. $56 is ridiculous. Uh, price for a monitor like this. But the good news is is that they came back into stock and so I'm now perfectly fine during a review and telling you about it because I was going to be I think ridiculed because hey you did this great review but these monitors are no longer available but now they are so let's take a closer look. All right so this is the contents of the box that came in the mail. Uh, first of all we've got some things that we're not going to use so we're going to start getting rid of some stuff. Uh, the remote control right here never going to use it for our external monitor application. I'm going to put that aside. This is the kind of cheap stand that comes with it and the way you mount it to, to the back of the monitor to put it on the stand along with a base uh, to you know, adhesive things on both sides. I guess you can stick it somewhere. We're not going to use either of these. So that's out of the picture. Next up we've got this uh, breakout cable that uh, since this is designed to be put into a car uh, it's going to be able to get your power and your composite inputs through this and the breakout cable attaches uh, goes into this uh, one connector right here which goes into your monitor. We're not going to use any of this. The whole point is to get out of the analog world and not even worry about composite uh, since we can't use it for my camera or I can't use it. So I'm going to discard this as well. So what we're left with here is the monitor and uh, <clears throat> before we can even check it out or test it uh, we're going to have to examine the outside for a few different things uh, like power since we kind of got rid of our power options right here we need another way which is fortunate because the monitor actually has its own power connector right here separate from the breakout cable socket so that we can power it that way. We've also got a threaded mount down here so we can mount it. Now this actually was not the standard uh, quarter 20 thread, it was something smaller. So first thing I recommend you do, uh, or at least what I did, is I took a quarter 20 tap right here and I tapped this hole out uh, so that I could use your standard uh, tripod mount on it. You can also take this off, this metal part off, this for Phillips head screws right here. I actually threaded it before I took it off, which probably wasn't the wisest thing to do because any metal debris that you generate from tapping this hole might fall into the monitor and that wouldn't be so good in the future. But I went ahead and did it and uh, blew it out with some canned air and uh, I think I'm okay. The other thing of note here is the, actually it's on this side, it's the HDMI. It's a mini HDMI, which is unusual. Most monitors have a full size HDMI connector. This has a mini. Now if your camera probably has a mini connector like this as well. So going from a mini to mini is kind of unusual because the only cable uh, in existence, I think, <laughs> there is one, actually it goes mini to mini. Uh, it's about uh, three or four dollars from mono price, but it's only about nine inches long. So if you have some kind of unusual setup or different setup, which I'm going to show you in a little while, you're gonna need some another kind of a cable or an adapter. Uh, I originally bought an adapter from Radio, Sh Radio Shack so I could use my uh, mini HDMI to regular HDMI cable. But then I ended up uh, feeling that it was too long and I wanted a different mounting option so I ended up getting a, making a custom one here from parts on eBay where I have kind of a right angle connector here and another right angle that went into the camera. This one goes in the monitor. I'll show you how I'm using this uh, later in the video. But then I essentially coupled these together uh, with this coupler right here. These cables were about $6 a piece and this coupler was about a dollar all on eBay. I'll leave the links below. So now to check out this monitor, we're gonna to have to power it somehow since we're not using this option here because we need a 12 volt battery. For that, we're gonna power it with something else. And this does not come with an AC adapter. If you want that, you'll have to spend a little extra money on one of the $77 models. I'll leave the links below in the description that come with an AC adapter. Um, or you can use a, kind of a generic one uh, but since we're putting this on a, a camera rig, we're going to want to power it with a battery and there's several options we can power this by. The first one is this kind of black brick. You can get these on eBay for about $22. This is what I powered 
uh, my last monitor with my, uh, my uh, standard definition monitor. And uh, these aren't bad. Um, you turn it on, plug it right into the power uh, connector there, and it powers on. Um, like I said, these aren't a bad option, but the, the main problem I had with this was that it takes about 14 hours to charge one of these batteries with the included charger. It's really the only way to charge it. And if you're doing some kind of a shoot where you need power uh, in successive days and you're going to want to be able to charge them overnight, um, these batteries will not charge in time. So that was a problem. Another thing I found out about these batteries was that they output about 11 and a half volts, um, which just means that they are going to drain at a certain rate. And I actually found a better option. These uh, Sony batteries, this is actually a battery that I had from when I did the Photo Deox uh, LED light review. It came with that. And it's basically a clone of the Sony uh, NPF550 battery. This is a larger one. This is the uh, NPF970. Um, obviously different capacities. This one's going to last longer. This one not as long. However, these are readily available. These run about, these generic models run about 10 bucks. These run about 17 to 20 dollars. I'll leave links below to where I got these. Um, and you can charge them on a standard charger like this. This is the one that came with the Photo Deox LED light. So I had it already. That's one of the uh, disadvantages of using these batteries uh, or that it's going to, you're going to have to buy a charger for it if you don't have one already. This one comes with a charger. So with 20, for $22, you'll get the charger, you'll get the battery. It just takes about 14 hours to charge these. And these take more of a standard uh, six to eight hours, I believe, probably even four to, to six hours to charge, depending on the capacity. Um, the nice thing about these batteries also is that they only output about seven and a half to eight and a half volts. So in theory, they should last longer than this battery if you're using the same uh, capacity uh, because they will not output as much as many volts so you, they should last longer. Um, so now how do you use these Sony batteries on this monitor? Well there's this uh, battery cradle that you can get on eBay for about $14. This isn't a charger, this is just a cradle, kind of a pass-through that will accept these batteries and snap right in here, right here and you can then plug them right into these same exact uh, battery connector like so and then you'll be able to power it like that oops there we go um, and one thing I really like about these cradles besides the price is that they give you several mounting options so if you absolutely have to mount it on the back of the monitor which is not what I'm doing but if you want to do that um, it has this bracket right here which will allow you to it'll just fit right over the uh, the threaded tripod mount on the bottom of the monitor so you can actually have the battery mounted directly to the back. This is made for a Lilliput monitor, uh, but it'll work on any of these with, thanks to this bracket. Um, but this battery, another disadvantage is there's no mounting. If you wanted to put it on the back of the monitor, you have to use some kind of Velcro option, which isn't always the best, but it is cheap and it will work. But I like this because not only does it have this bracket, but you've also got a quarter 20 hole right here with a little knob, which you can attach to any uh, male quarter 20 uh, thread like this, this adapter here that we've used in the past, the male to male quarter inch adapter. Um, and it has this Velcro strap that will allow you to wrap around any portion of your rig for uh, safety. If this doesn't work, or you can use these in tandem. Um, I'm actually using it just with this Velcro strap. Okay, so now the monitor is powered by the Sony Cradle and a battery, Sony compatible battery, and I've got it plugged in to my uh, Sony NEX5N with the kind of custom cable that I made here. So now we can examine some of the features of the monitor. Or the, the uh, features are all controlled with these buttons down here. This is your power button. Here's your power indicator light. Then you've got a button labeled AV. So if you want to cycle through your inputs, you have AV1 as indicated up here in the red letters in the corner. I don't know if you can see that or not. It says AV1. Press it again. You have AV2. Uh, those are both composite inputs that we don't have because we toss the breakout cable, but we don't need them anyway. And the next one is the HDMI input. So that's the video coming right from the camera. You can see all the displays that we've got set up. Um, the next button down here is labeled M for menu. So when I push that, you get your kind of standard uh, controls for the monitor. You have brightness, which you can adjust with these two arrow keys. Contrast, uh, you have saturation. And you have volume. All those things can be controlled with the arrow keys, as I've said. You push it again, then you can change the language from English to Chinese. I'm going to keep it on English. Uh, next up, we have ratio. You can change the ratio of the monitor with the arrow keys. It goes between 16 by 9 
and oh, it dumped me out again. It's got to go through all the menu back to 16 by 9. So when I'm toggling it to 4 by 3, you know, notice now it's pillar box, so everything's squashed. Change it again, it goes back to 16 by 9. I'm not sure why you would ever have it on 4 by 3 anymore, uh, but it's there if you want it, or you can just look like me, leave it in 16 by 9. Um, the next up, now this is where it gets really good because now you can flip the screen from left to right. Now I'm not sure why you would do this, but it is an option, something I'm not sure I've seen before on these kind of entry level cheap monitors, but it's there. Not something I would use, but it's there. However, next up is the up and down option, which uh, you can also toggle. So now it's flipping the screen up and down. And you might wonder, well, why would I ever want to do this? Well, actually, if you uh, note, remember, the mounting threads are on the bottom right there. So if you do not want to mount, or if you want the option to mount uh, your monitor from the top and sort of hang it, uh, you can now do that by, by flipping your monitor upside down, essentially. I have to go through the menu again to get back to it. Um, Okay, so how does this thing perform? Well, the resolution of this monitor is 1024 by 600 pixels, which is a bump up from what you would normally see in an entry-level high-def monitor, 800 by 600. So that right there is a perk. Um, and at 56 bucks, you're not going to find anything even close to this at that resolution. I think it looks really good. The images look sharp. It's not full HD. Full HD is 1920 by 1080, uh, but you're not paying a full price, so that's not a problem. It's definitely a step up from the smaller monitor here at seven inches. I think it looks really good. It's great for critical focus. It's great if you have a bunch of people gathered around trying to look at the image. Um, is there anything I didn't like about this monitor? Well, there are a couple things. Uh, first of all, if you once you power up the monitor, it takes about five seconds to go from your camera to the monitor. One 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, four 1,000, five 1,000, six 1,000, five to six seconds. Uh, to go from your camera to the monitor when you first power up or first connect. And that's normal for these cheaper, mo cheaper monitors. Uh, most of them, all of them will do that. But at $56, who cares? Um, another probably takeaway is that this is just a cheaper construction. All these buttons are plasticky and kind of clacky. And if you were to drop this whole thing, it might not work again. So take care of it. Be careful. It's not heavy duty. It's lightweight. It's just plastic. It, the plastic is about medium grade, I, I would say. It's not super cheap. Flimsy, like it's going to fall apart in your hands, but it's not bad. I kind of like the styling. It's made to go inside of a luxury car, or look like it's supposed to go inside of a luxury car because that's what it's made for. This brown one is actually no longer available, but there's a black mahogany version and a brushed gray. Uh, the black mahogany is $56. The brushed gray is $58. I don't know why you're paying two extra dollars for the gray color opposed to the black, uh, but that's, that's how it is. So... Uh, anyway, those are the only two negatives I could really think about this monitor uh, because and the price would uh, eliminate those negatives anyway. You're not going to find anything in this price range that works this well or that is just that much of a bargain. So I don't, can't see any negatives actually. Anyway, let's go on to some of the other things I mentioned I would talk about, which is how I'm attaching it to the frugal cage. It's connected from the top because you can flip the image. As I mentioned previously, I can hang it from the top with this uh, Photodeox 7-inch power arm. They've got connected to this cold shoe on my uh, on the frugal cage. If you want to know what the frugal cage is or how to build this, uh, check the link below. I've got done. I've just recently put it together in a, in a recent video. And next up, we have the custom HDMI cable that I've got here. And if you'd like to build one yourself or figure out what your camera needs, check the orientation of the HDMI outputs and the input on your monitor, however you want to place it, and then. Basically, do your best guess on which cables to get uh, off of eBay. That's what I did. And you can figure it out. I mean, the HDMI ports are rounded on one side and square on the other, so you can basically figure out what it's going to look like and how it's going to fit. That's what I did. Spent about 12 bucks, and I think it works really well. It's nice and compact. It's clean. It's neat. And finally, I've got the battery separate from the monitor here. Uh, right here, this is the Sony battery and cradle. I've actually got it in a cell phone mount. These are about two bucks on eBay. Links below. And there's a male-to-male -male thread attached to the tripod mount on the bottom and going into the side of the frugal cage here on the knob side uh, with the metal threads that I recently upgraded. So that's pretty much it. That's the whole setup. I think this monitor is a fantastic deal at 56 bucks. You're not going to find anything better. I highly recommend you getting one. See you next time.